All right, our second presenter is the co-founder and CEO of Granville Biomedical Incorporated, which specializes in surgical simulation for women's health to assist in medical trainees in their rehearsal of high acuity procedures prior to patient care. That's a lot of P's, and that's what she does. And welcome up, Christy Goody. Goody, Goody, Goody. That's Goody. I did practice this before. It, so, good luck. I didn't mean to shake you up. It's Gaudi, and that's totally okay. All right. Hello. Let's do this thing. So I'm Christine Gaudi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Granville Biomedical. I'm a biomedical designer. And what does that mean, you might ask yourself? Well, basically, I'm a designer who infuses creativity into healthcare. And uh, it's a really exciting career that I've kind of um, developed for myself. And I'll tell you all about it. So I've always been an artist of some sort, whether it was painting or sculpture or music or a combination of all those things. That kind of sounds weird, but as you can imagine. Um, but I've always wanted to find a way to kind of um, hone my craft and, and kind of infuse creativity into my career whichever way I could. Um, I got into industrial design when I, when I was younger. Uh, I discovered that I love design for disabilities because it gave me a purpose. It gave me a way to give back and actually use my creativity to help people and potentially impact change. I worked as a wheelchair seating specialist for a while and uh, with some kiddos and I would design ergonomic seating solutions and I decided to go back to school and do my master's in industrial design and went really deep down that rabbit hole in terms of how do I understand the medical device design as a designer? I'm not a doctor, so how can I tiptoe into that, into that category? So I, I got permission to do some biomedical engineering courses and I just got right in there and just kind of went for it. Uh, my first Pecha Kucha was actually in South Africa in 2011. This was me on stage. What you can't see, there was like 3,000 people in front of me. I was so nervous that I couldn't even be nervous. I was just like vibrating at like a different level. But I was talking about how I was going to infuse my creativity into healthcare and on, like unapologetically so, right? Um, I got to volunteer and shadow some amazing seating specialists in Cape Town and they brought me in and they showed me, you know, their material access and their economic barriers and what it looked like to design on the ground in Africa, which was vastly different in terms of, you know, injuries, pathologies, conditions of people that were coming in as patients. Um, I took a step back from that eventually and I got into more like med tech because I got really techy and super dorky and I'm still that way. And I designed an app that actually gives uh, paraplegic wheelchair users back the power to uh, intervene early stage pressure ulcers as opposed to someone like myself letting them know that they actually have a life threatening condition. Um, I was in Vancouver for a few years and I told people I was around which was maybe a big mistake because I was just like inundated with projects and contracts designing everything from branding to medical devices to industrial design to packaging and, and whatever got thrown at me I was like I'll take it yes um, and it was really cool because I learned a lot about 3D printing and, and now I integrate my 3D printing into medical simulation and education. And what that means is that clinicians and trainees come to me and they go, hey, Christine, like we have this procedure coming up. Can you 3D print or produce something for us like a task trainer so we can rehearse that procedure in advance of doing it on a patient? And of course I can, because whatever you dream up, I will literally make a reality. So whether it's, uh, you're going to see lots of sort of the graphic nature of these, but there's uh, vaginal laceration repair models that I make for um, childbirth injuries, urinary incontinence models so that nurses can simulate how to insert medical devices, prostate models to detect early stage cancers, and so on and so forth. And I get a call from some doctors who say, Christine, can you extract you know, my patient's abdominal aorta with an aneurysm and 3D print it so we can practice on the patient-specific file ahead of time? And of course, I'm like, oh yeah, I can do whatever you need. So I'll 3D print that or sculpt it or whatever they need, and they actually practice and uh, rehearse those procedures. I get a call from a doctor in rural Newfoundland. I'm originally from Newfoundland. And he said, Christine, we have all these pregnant patients but no OBGYN doctors, can you, you know, somehow source some sort of fetal simulation models? And I was like, I'll do one better. I will go to Michael's and buy the putty and I will sculpt you some babies. And so he has that now in his office, which is awesome. 
Sometimes they get invited into the simulation suites in different medical hospitals to actually see the residents use what I'm making in person, and I play the role, you know, in a simulation scenario of one of the doctors, and I get to take pictures, and, and I actually get to see how these task trainers are impacting medical education, and that gives me so much um, satisfaction and gratitude. And then I realize in simulation, a lot of industries use it, healthcare, marine, military, aviation, and I brought all these people together last year in St. John's when I was there, and I designed a conference that I called SimTech, and I brought all these people together, and I was like, let's talk about what you're doing in simulation, what I'm doing, and how we can learn from one another. And uh, you know, beyond that, myself and my co-founder found ourselves in Bangladesh last year, and we brought 50 you know, vagina models and uterus models. I hope there's no one here that's under 18 for this kind of, anyways, uh, it, it's science. So, so we went there and we, we taught the clinicians, the midwives, the, the medical practitioners, how to advance their skills with C-sections, with vaginal laceration repair, which is a huge problem in countries like Bangladesh where there's not a lot of access to healthcare and proper tools and techniques. So here's me like really over overexcited about something random, explaining to them, hey, here's my 3D printer I brought all the way from Canada, and here's how you guys can use this kind of economical tool to create things on the ground for yourselves. So since I got back from there, I always volunteer to speak at whatever you know, comes up. I'm happy to, to give back and contribute and translate whatever little bit of knowledge I've taken back with me to help kind of create more impact on the ground here and let people know there's a lot more work to be done, in, not only in Bangladesh and South Africa, but all over the world, including right here. And then fast forward a little bit after that, I sign, here's me signing my first uh, federal grant to start my own company. This was like four months ago. And it only hit me like three weeks ago when I'm at Invent the conference and I look at my name tag and I go Christine Gowdy Granville Biomedical that's crazy I have my own company went like I don't even remember how this all happened but here we are and I've developed this really cool team and uh, it's fun to see people rally around me and actually feel like this is something that's necessary and required in healthcare and so I'm just every day using my creativity to come up with new ideas and solutions and problem solve and you know I'm, I'm like living proof that any designer or artist can very much live in healthcare and, and create change. So I'm just going to leave you guys on this note because it's something I think about every day of my life. And you know, if you guys could go home tonight and think about, you know, what could you do in terms of design to improve the way we live, whatever it is. And it doesn't mean you have to have the same creativity as me or your neighbor or whatever, but I really believe that everybody inherently has creativity inside them. And I really encourage you to kind of hone your craft and find a way to uh, impact change and give back using your own creativity. Thank you.